are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Capps. I'm so glad you could join us for the broadcast today. Now, I don't know if all of you saw the last broadcast where we talked about how God taught Abraham faith and at the end of that broadcast, we got to talking about healing and how that sometimes people want to believe God for the healing, and, but they're not developed in their faith. You know, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And uh, sometimes if you push people out uh, beyond the, where they're developed in faith, then you can have disastrous results. And um, we have a very special guest on our program today. Uh, it's my wife, Peggy, and we have been married for 48, 49 years this coming June. And uh, I'll tell you, I know some of you think, well, you know, I don't, you didn't think we were that old. Well, we were very young when we were born. <laughs> we, we went to school together, and we were, uh, knew each other in high school. And uh, we've, we've, I tell people this, that, you know, it's like we've always been together. And uh, I wanted to share some things. We, we talked about it after the last broadcast, and we wanted to share some things about uh, back in the 80s, how that we discovered that she had a liver problem and uh, how we dealt with it. Because I know that there's a lot of people that are uh, out there wanting to believe God, but they just, you know, uh, I've had them to write me and say, uh, Brother Caps, the doctors told me this, and uh, should I have an operation? Uh, I want to believe God. And I always tell them when they write me, I say, by all means, have the operation for this reason. The very fact that they had to ask reveals that their faith is not developed to that. You see, we're not against doctors. We believe in divine healing. We're not against doctors. Thank God for doctors. But... Doctors can't heal you, and they won't keep you from getting healed, but they can sure treat the symptoms until uh, something better comes along. And then there's sometimes uh, you must have an operation for certain things unless you get divine healing. So I wanted to uh, peg you to come on the broadcast and share with you just sort of how this thing developed and how we dealt with it. Uh, you know, when you've used your faith to the limit, whatever you do is not in unbelief. So, Peggy, if you would just share with the people how this all came about. Well, actually, it all started back in the early 80s. Um, at that time, we had gone and had some blood work done to see if we were eating the right nutritional things. And at the time, the uh, person that did that called us in and said, uh, are you feeling well, Mrs. Capps? And I said, yes, I feel perfectly fine. And they said, well, the blood work that we have done on you is your bilirubin is very high, and we suggest that you get home to a doctor immediately. Well, it was kind of a shock because I didn't feel bad. I didn't hurt anywhere. I thought everything was just perfectly fine. But anyway, we went home, and I went and got an appointment with a physician, and he told me at that time that there was a problem with my liver, and uh, they didn't seem to know exactly what the problem was. But he suggested I come in and have a lot of tests done and they discovered at that time that they couldn't tell exactly other than through the blood work that there was a problem and this went on for a considerable amount of time and all this time we have had been believing what the word said for we know that in Hebrews 4:12 it says the word is alive and active and energizing so God's Word, if it's alive inside us, is going to work in our behalf. So anyway, the doctor said, suggested that I come in for some extensive tests over a period of time. This went on for several years. And around 1985, they suggested that um, I go somewhere else to a clinic or something. And so I did. I went to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And the doctor came up with the same thing, that my 
liver was not in the best of conditions, but they didn't know what was wrong with it. But he said, you know, I think sometime you're going to have to have a liver transplant. Well, I told him, I said, no, my liver's going to be healed. I'm not going to have to have a liver transplant. So he, he just, okay, you know, he didn't argue with me. <laughs> I'm sort of a strong-willed person. I think he could tell that. So anyway, we went back home, and all this time I was confessing what God had said about me, that by his stripes I was healed, and I believed that I was healed. And I thought, well, God's going to give me a new liver. He's going to somehow make my liver work and function again like it should. So this went on for some period of time and I kept in close contact with the doctor there at home. All this time I was confessing what the Word says. I was watching my words, but things didn't seem to be improving. And I was constantly having problems with the idea that my liver was not, I wasn't feeling any better. I had to fight those thoughts that would come against us constantly about how that Jesus said I was healed and his word says I was healed. So therefore I believe that I am healed. But these symptoms would come. You'd have so many times that you feel so bad you didn't know what to do. And all of this time, I was still saying that I was going to be healed and go, I was going to have a new liver. One time in the middle of the summer, a few years later, I had the, the Lord just really kind of spoke in my heart that everything was going to be all right and that my liver was going to be all right. And I didn't really understand it, but somehow inside I knew that I was going to be all right. But physically on the outside, I really couldn't tell any changes in my body much. So they decided to do a test without going into extreme things about it. I uh, had to have a tube put in my liver. This went for a period of time because the bile would not drain out. And uh, it just got to the point to where I was really having such difficulties that life was really getting to be a little bit of a problem for me but I knew what I knew in my heart. And so I was just pushing and pushing and waiting for that new liver, but it didn't come the way I thought it was gonna come. Finally, I agreed to have a liver transplant. I didn't want to up to this point of time. Finally, the Lord gave me a little story that I'd heard Charles tell about the man that there was a flood and the water was rising and rising. And he prayed and he said, Dear Lord, please save me. And the Lord didn't, didn't anything happen for a while. Then this boat came by, the water was rising. And they said, Would you like a ride out? And he said, No, said God's going to save me. So the water's still rising and he's passed up this opportunity. And then somebody comes over with a helicopter and offers to lift him out. He's on the roof. And he said, no, God's going to save me. And the next thing, the man's in heaven. And uh, he says, God, I thought you were going to save me. He said, I sent you two chances and you passed both of them up. So I, what could I do? <laughs> so that, that story came to my mind and I thought, Lord, here they have made every provision. They've got the liver ready for me. I'm on the list, I'm ready, and all I need to do is say yes. Rather than stand for my way of healing to come, I can take this one and it'll all be done quickly. And so I told him, yes, I would go ahead and have it. And I did. And it was almost miraculous the way that it all happened and all came about. And I don't know, Charles may want to talk a little more yeah, before I, I, I want to share uh, go back up just a little bit because back uh, in the 80s 80 or 81 you remember they said you had a tumor on your liver and yeah. they were sure it was a tumor and cancer probably and of course we agreed and prayed that, and that it was not going to turn out that way that we uh, the Bible said if two shall agree on earth is touching anything they ask it shall be done by the father which is in heaven and uh, so we, we agreed and prayed on that. And uh, she went in for an operation, and they, of course, went in there and found out there's no tumor at all. 
there was no tomb. So, you know, uh, one great victory there. Uh, no tumor at all. There was some scar tissue on the liver, if you mm -hmm. remember. But uh, uh, the thing that what we need to realize, you know, here in, in 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Now, we know that's the Word of God, yeah. but sometimes we lose sight of the end results. And uh, there's some things in the Bible that we may not fully understand. For instance, you remember God sent uh, two angels down to Sodom and Gomorrah to see if it was as he had heard. Now, you and I know that God knows everything. Why would he do that? It seems that God does not always choose to go by divine order and uh, reach, know everything. He has the ability to, but sometimes he wants to go by natural means to find it out. Now, don't ask me why, I don't understand it, but you see it in the Bible. The point is this, that sometimes, uh, or most of the time, everybody that wants healing wants divine healing. Sometimes it is not because they're developed in faith to that point, but sometimes it's because they're just afraid of the knife. They just don't want to have an operation. And if that's the only reason that a person's not having an operation, you may bury a lot of those folks because their faith may not be developed to the point that they can receive divine healing. It is available, but we're not against doctors. Now, here, here's the point I'm, I'm driving at, is the fact that the end results was what we were after. Yes. I mean, that's the, that's the whole thing about healing and health. I prayed and asked God to restore my wife to me as she was several years before because I had looked at photographs five or six years before she had the liver transplant. And uh, you would not believe how her... Uh, uh, health had deteriorated. I mean, she looked like, you looked like death warmed over, yeah. you know. <laughs> it wasn't funny at the time, but yeah. I, I went back and looked at photographs uh, several years before, and I asked the Lord, I said, restore Peggy to me the way she is here. Now, uh, she looked like she was 80 years old at that point, and uh, she's not near 80 yet, but uh, anyway, she, the end result was, that she is restored, and now she looks younger than she did uh, back there in the 1993, of course. Uh, but what I, the point is this. The end result is what you're after. Whether it comes by operation or by doctors, God has given the doctors the ability to do things and to change situations in your life. I'm the first to say, oh yes, if I can get my divine healing by believing God and acting on the Word, then we ought to do it. Because the Scripture says, by His stripes ye were healed. As far as God's concerned, it's a settled fact. Jesus bore the curse for us. But yet, if for some reason that we don't understand or don't know, we're not able to grasp that and enter into it by divine healing, then we should be willing to take what God has made available to us. And, and that's what you decided to do, what, yeah. is uh, take the provision that is made. And the doctors had said, you know, if uh, you've got less than a year to live. Yeah. So you, there comes a point where you've got to make a decision that, uh, you know, we've gone, we've believed God, we've used our faith to the limit. Now, anything we do that can help us is not in unbelief. So. It's like I've heard you say, too, so many times. It's really hard to believe and use your faith when the symptoms are so strong in your body. You know the Word says you're healed, and by Jesus' stripes, I know I was healed. But when those symptoms are so bad, when you can hardly stand up, or when you are feeling so weak, and you feel like you just really could care less about anything, that's when you have to go back to the Word that says, no, I'm not going to be moved by these symptoms. I'm not going to let them overcome me because the Word says that I'm healed and I'm going to see, th see it through to the end. I'm going to receive 
the total fulfillment of that. My body's got to come into line with what the Word said. And the Word sure. said, by his stripes I was healed. So you have to talk to your body. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of the means that it takes to get healed, God wants you well. Right. Now, even the doctors know that. They know that God wants you well. Now, there's some Christians don't believe that. They believe God makes you sick. No, uh, sickness and disease is not of God, and uh, God wants you well. And uh, we, we must make a demand on God's provision for healing. But if for some reason we're not able to get it through faith and through the, through the Word of God, there are about five Bible meth methods of receiving healing. And, uh, you know, I say it this way, and uh, I think it'll help you understand it. I'm a pilot, and I've, I've been flying airplanes for 40-some-odd years. And uh, now, I didn't just wake up some morning and say, I believe in airplanes. I believe that airplanes will fly. I guess I can fly one. No, just because I believe that they'll fly, I have to learn how to operate uh, an airplane. And through many trials and errors, <laughs> I would say. And you see, if we were operating perfectly in the Word of God as Jesus did, we would get the same results that He did. But how many of you know we're not perfect? If for some reason you, you are not able to grasp uh, the Word of God and get developed in it to receive divine healing without going to a doctor, without taking medicine, then it's foolish to... to you you know, lose out on life and not feel good and not, uh, and maybe even lose your life. I mean, it, it's not a good testimony to say, well, he trusted God and he died, you know. Uh, so if there's some reason that you're not able to do that, see, I, I say it this way, use your faith up front. And that's what we were doing. We were yes. using our faith up front. front. We did every single thing that we knew to do uh, to get this thing settled without having to have an operation. Mm -hmm. But here, here's the thing you need to realize, that uh, doctors can't heal you, and uh, medicine can't heal you, but the things that they do sometimes can cause your body to heal itself. And with a liver that was totally unfunctional, uh, when the doctors did a liver transplant, then the body can heal itself. Now, uh, share with us how that, uh, you know, some people stayed in the hospital for three months, but uh, they let us go out and eat at a restaurant five days after you had the liver transplant. Yeah, it was kind of strange. They came in and wanted to know if we would like to go out of the hospital a while, and, and we said, are you serious? <laughs> it was on the fifth day after the uh, transplant, and uh, they said, yes. Said, uh, why don't you take her out to eat or somewhere tonight? And we said, well, sure, I'd be glad to. And uh, so we went out and happened to go to a restaurant where we'd been about a week before I had the transplant. And we went in and sat down, and this waitress recognized me. And she came over and said, what happened to you? And I said, well, I had a liver transplant. And she said, well, you look so different. Now, this was five days after I had the transplant. She said, why, you look so different, I can't believe. And I said, well, it's, I just thank the Lord, you know, that for it. And I'm, I'm mending and I'm getting better quickly. And uh, so we just had several things like that that happened. The hand of the Lord was upon me, even though I did have to have the transplant and I didn't have any problems. We went home, I think I was supposed to have to stay three months and we went home after six weeks all the way back. I had the transplant in Minnesota and we came back to Arkansas almost six weeks after that and everything just went well. And I know that was a miracle because so many people that were there that we talked with had all kinds of problems and had to stay so much longer. And it was actually, we told people about the Word of God and how that we were believing what the Word said. and things just went so well for us, it was a testimony to those others that were around us there. Actually, what uh, they s said was that 
they, you know, they told her all of these bad things is going to happen after the liver transplant. I guess they prepare you for the worst. Then if it's better, you're not uh, disappointed. But uh, they told her all of these gory things that would happen. There, her face would swell, and all of these things would happen. And you know, as far as I know, you never had one symptom that they said would happen after the liver transplant. Now, folks, this is because of the Word of God. See. We, you confess the Word, you confess the, the confessions out of this little booklet, God's Creative Power for Healing, and built the Word of God into her. Yes. And the result was out of, uh, you know, in five days as she was able to leave the hospital and, and go out and eat, and then stayed there for some time, you know, for what we were out of the hospital completely in nine days. Mm -hmm. And there's been some people that stayed in there, you know, for two and three months. but. The point is that God wants you well. Regardless of how, you have to come by the end results. Now, the end results is the same. So that's yeah. what we're after. And uh, one thing that uh, we had, uh, what did they call those sessions that we had with people that were going to have liver transplant? Uh, mm -hmm. They were, you'd have a session with them and they had somebody come in and have a liver transplant and say, uh, uh, you know, I had a liver transplant and so on. And then they'd open it up to questions and say, what are your thoughts? And uh, there were some people there that said, well, this fellow said, well, I brought my wife here and if it's the will of God that I take her home, I guess we will. And if it's not, I guess she'll, you know, die, so to speak. Uh, a defeatist attitude. And I tried to share with them, uh, faith in the Word of God and to speak what you believe and believe what the Word says and believe the best of everything. And he got just a little bit upset with me and yeah. said, uh, I, I told him I had a book I'd like for him to read. And he said he didn't want to read one of my books. He, uh, you know, he had his own opinion of the situation. And uh, do you have anything you'd like to share about that? Nothing other than the fact that whatever you say and whatever you believe, you're planting seeds like he teaches so much of the time. The words that you speak are seeds that you're planting in your heart. And if you want the good things, you've got to say the good things to bring them to pass. If you have this negative, defeatist attitude, that's going to bring because what you say, you're going to have. And if you keep saying what you have, you're never going to change it. You're going to keep having that. So you've got to change what you're saying if you want to change things in your life. Call for the good things. Call for healing and health. Don't be calling the symptoms, how I'm hurting, how I'm sick, I don't feel good, because you're going to be feeling bad, you're going to be having what you say. So speak God's Word, call for the good things, and then you'll have the good things eventually. It won't happen instantly, it won't happen overnight, but eventually that's what you're going to have, what you're saying. That's good preaching. You know, this is a way of life. It's not a fad. That's this right. is a way of life. Yes. This is the way that you call things that are not as though they were, yeah. uh, by calling for the good things. Uh, somebody said, well, how can you say you're healed when you're sick? That's all the more reason you ought to call for it. We're not denying sickness. We don't deny that sickness exists, but we deny it's right to exist in our body, however it is, whether it's through doctors, healing through doctors, whether it's through operation, whatever, Believe God in the situation. I always tell people, what can you believe? What can you release your faith in? And that's why we won't agree with you. In other words, if, if they can't believe for total healing uh, without an operation or whatever, then let's get in agreement and believe that you will mend quickly and be out of it and the thing will be over with and, and the doctors will be amazed at how quick you come out of it. Don't, don't put it off. Start confessing the Word of God and confess what God's Word says. We have a little booklet that we, we want to offer to you, and, and uh, it's called God's Creative Power Will, uh, God's Creative Power for Healing. We have two of them. One's called God's Creative Power, and the other called God's Creative Power for Healing. But these are confession books. It'll help you know how to confess and renew your mind to the Word of God so you can believe the best of everything and not believe that all the negative and all the bad things of life. It's called calling things that are not. Confess the Word of God. Words in your mouth and in your heart, the Apostle Paul said. And it actually works. And it'll change situations. Now, I trust you've been blessed by the broadcast. Before we leave the broadcast today, I, I want to offer uh, offer number 
2124. It is a uh, VHS video and a audio cassette of, it's called God's Provision, make a demand on God's provision for healing. Did you know that you have to make a demand on God's provision? Now, sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, you're, you're just making a demand on God. No, no, we're not making a demand on God. God's already given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 and, and some other scriptures, God sent His Word and healed us. And then uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 says, God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of Him that's called us to glory and virtue and through the exceeding great and precious promises. Now, the Apostle Paul said concerning the promises of God, he said all the promises of God are yes and amen. If God promised it, he's already said yes to it. So it's not a matter of talking God into it. It's a matter of making a demand on God's provision for healing. And that's what this video, it's an hour and a half video, I believe, uh, on uh, making a demand on God's provision for healing and also the audio cassette. Uh, for instance, you have a bank account downtown. Have you noticed that they don't send you a $100 bill every Monday morning? They won't send you any money unless you make a demand on it. Now, is it yours? Certainly it is. Belongs to you. But unless you go by the legal means of obtaining it, you cannot get it. You have to write a demand note, and that's a check. So if you don't write a check, they won't send you any money. This is the way God has made these things available to us. You must make a demand on the provision. You're not demanding of God. You're demanding of the provision that is made, for by His stripes you were healed. Uh, this, uh, these tapes will help you understand that. That's offer number 2124. It's the video and the audio, plus the little booklet, God's Creative Power for Healing, a confession booklet, help you get your mind renewed to the healing scriptures all for the price of $20. That's offer 2124, the videotape, the audio tape, and also the booklet, God's Creative Power for Healing. Just write to me, Charles Caps, Box 69, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. Ask for offer number 2124. Enclose $20, we'll send it to you postpaid. Now, we also have a toll-free order line. If you're ordering by MasterCard or Visa, uh, toll-free 1-877 396-9400, 1-877-396-9400. The video, the audio cassette, plus the booklet, God's Creative Power for Healing. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is Lord. glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.